What's up, gang? Welcome back to the Fab Life Podcast, Fab Life Show. Today's conversation, I catch up with a friend, I like to call him a friend now, uh, that I met about six, seven months ago at a work function, a um, entrepreneurial function. And uh, him and I really hit it off. And I picked his brain about how he saw entrepreneurship, business, the world, philanthropy. And the guy is such a unique guy. And um, his name is Rob LaRue. And he is living life to the fullest, you know, and we talk a lot about freedom through entrepreneurship. So there's a lot of gems that were dropped during this conversation. I hope you guys pick it up. I hope you guys listen to it again. I learned a lot and caught myself really taking mental notes of some of his philosophies. Um, At where he's at right now, at such a young age, he's already a philanthropist. He has over 100 doors in rental real estate that's making cash flow every uh, every month, Um, self-made. And at this point, I don't want to say the word retired, but the reason I don't want to say because he's continuing to work, but he's doing it based on his time, his efforts, and whatever it is that he wants to do at the moment. He's not tied to a job. And we kind of talk uh, about that rat race mentality as well, too, and how to break out of it. So this is one of my uh, favorite conversations that I had in recent memory. Enjoy it. Like I said, a bunch of um, gems drop. Pick them up, guys. Listen to this again. And um, I guess without further delay, I want to introduce you to Mr. Rob LaRue. Rob, good morning, brother. How are you? Good morning. I am great. Happy to be here, man. It's a nice 70 degree day in Austin, Texas. So I'm I was happy. gonna say it's 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 uh, more afternoon for you, right? So yeah, um, yeah, early afternoon. We're going to cover a lot of stuff today. I'm so excited to have you on the show because we're going to talk, uh, as always, a little bit about the entrepreneurial spirit. But before we do that, let's get to what's really important is in Austin, is it Terry Black's? This is the best barbecue. <laughs> is, that, is that what I should be focusing on when I go there? Yes, yes. Uh, it is. It, I, I will give the gold medal barbecue award to Terry Black's. Um, that place is, is life changing. Yeah. I, I, I'm not kidding. Like, I can't go back to, to regular barbecue. I'm, I'm ruined hearing, for life. Man. That's why I keep hearing. How, how are the lines? Are the lines ridiculous or is it pretty, pretty decent? If you go, if you go on a weekend, it's, uh-huh. it's horrible. I mean, it's like around the block. Okay. Um, and there's one other spot called Franklin's mm. in Austin. The, mm-hmm. I think those are probably the top two. Okay. Both of them are, you know, if you go during the prime hours, crazy, crazy lines, but uh, honestly, it's worth it. Especially if you're visiting, it's, yeah. it's worth, it's absolutely worth it. If I drop your name, do I get like the Goodfellas escort through the back hallways and stuff or what? <laughs> you do. You do. You actually <laughs> go to underground entrance, back love elevator. It. They take you up. Um, yeah, no lines. Drop my name for sure. <laughs> love it. Love it, man. Well, again, brother, th- thanks for uh, making the time. Uh, let's jump right into it, man. I know, you know, your entrepreneurial background in terms of uh, developing and, and um, you know, holding real estate and stuff like that. And a lot of uh, my talks have been real estate related, but we're going to veer off that and just talk about, you know, you know the, the mindset behind being an entrepreneur in general. But sure. uh, before we dive into that, give me a little bit of background for yourself. You're in Austin now, but originally from California, right? Yeah, um, I'll give you kind of uh, my story. So... I grew up in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Um, my my dad is is a doctor, and so I when I went to school, I actually studied neuroscience. I thought mm-hmm. I was going to go to medical school, and I think about junior. So I went to UCSB in Santa Barbara, and probably midway through junior year, I realized that my now, despite the fact that I, I really do love medicine and science, and and it was extremely interesting coursework. Um, being a doctor, I think was, was more my, my dad's dream and, and not so much mine. And I, I ended up taking a, uh, a couple electives, just, I, I was at a point in my life where I was questioning a lot. And, um, so I took some, some random electives, you know, writing, entrepreneurship, all this stuff. And, uh, I took a, an entrepreneurship class and the professor <clears throat> had asked the class, to think about things that you did as a child or, you know, in your youth that you would just do for fun or for free. And maybe that would give some kind of indication of what you might want to do uh, in the future. And Mm -hmm. so I, I, I remember during that class um, when I was in seventh grade, I was, I think I was 14. I had started an eBay company. So this was back in like the old school eBay days. And I don't know why I got into this, but I got really into Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola antiques. 
And I read this book and Coca-Cola, you know, has this incredible history, right? It's like one of the oldest companies in America, in the, you know, one of the most recognizable brands in the world, if not the most recognizable. And, you know, they made everything from, you know, these crazy bottles and advertisements to, you know, like kids, toys, everything you can think of they made. And I think they were started in 1880. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they've been through world wars and all these things. And I got really into the history and I started taking the city bus because I couldn't drive yet. So I'd take the city bus to garage sales and estate sales. And I would, uh, you know, just find these things and I'd buy them. um, And I kind of knew what they were worth. And I'd resell them on eBay. And I remember I made 15 grand, almost 15 grand in seventh grade. And Jeez. yeah. And I remember like one, I bought this one mm. bit, this advertisement. It was probably five, it's probably like five feet tall by four feet long. And it was from the 1930s. And I bought it for $300. And I sold it to someone in France for, mm. I think, 3,500. And I know I remember asking my mom to drive me to FedEx and I was like, had this huge thing. There's this kid coming in there asking to ship it to France. I think the shipping was like $1,500 by itself. Uh So I, uh, I think looking back on that, I knew that I loved entrepreneurship. I loved building businesses and being creative and just like the not having a limit. Mm -hmm. Um, so I decided to pursue more of the business path. So I finished the neuroscience degree, but I took a job at Oracle in tech in San Francisco, uh, right out of school and did sales. I figured, you know, if I, uh, if I want to be in any kind of business entrepreneurship world, sales would be a good, good skill set. And Oracle is a good name to have on your resume. And so yeah. <clears throat> moved up to San Francisco and I started uh started as a business development rep so basically cold calling and getting getting leads for mm-hmm. um for software for uh you know to big companies and and this was for Oracle and it was in their marketing software department so i think day 3 i was sitting in my cubicle and i just had this realization um i just had like a light bulb moment where i was like you know what Larry Ellison is on his 400 foot yacht right now in the Caribbean. Sure. Um, while I am making this dude richer. And mm-hmm. I just had this realization that the exact same amount of like biological energy output, you mm-hmm. know, like the actual ATP of your cells and the biological output of energy is no different whether I do it for Larry or if I do it for myself. And the difference is that if I do it for myself, at least when I'm done, I'm building something that's going to last and stay there. Mm -hmm. If I do it for Larry or whoever else, the day I stop, my paycheck's done, right? right? You're like, you're done. So I just had this light bulb moment where I was like, I would rather, you know, I'm going to be stressed either way. I'm Mm -hmm. either going to stress out for myself or I'm going to stress out for someone else. Right. And so that's what really uh, sparked my, I, I think it was between that and my general hatred of the American system um, of, you know, go to school, get a job, climb mm-hmm. the ladder, retire when you're 75. I was like deeply pissed off by that. Sure. And, uh, and I think it, it's, a, it's a big scam to make very few people wealthy in this country. And, um, and so I think that's what, what got me on the entrepreneurship route. Dude, there is so much to unpack there and I'm, I'm trying to resist not jumping in because you hit so many marks that I agree on. <laughs> uh, but, but let, but I'm making mental notes, but let, let's first start with this question because I, I think you're a good, good person to answer this question. Do you think the spirit of entrepreneurship, is that something hardwired in somebody? If it's not, can it on some level be learned? So let's start there. Obviously, you, you're hardwired, man. Yeah, um, yeah. Just from the description from, from seventh grade, making 15 grand. I know adults in their 50s have never made 15 grand on yeah. anything outside of their job, right? So A, is it hardwired? And B, can it be learned to some degree? 
Yeah, that's a great, I've never, never really thought about that question. I know, obviously, the answer for myself, mm -hmm. I know that it's always been hardwired for me. Um, but, you know, I think one of, I think that probably it, it can be, I don't know if we can necessarily, I, I think the skill set can be learned. Mm. Um, I don't know if, and I think maybe if people fall into or, you know, want to try something and, and it goes well, they can get excited by it mm -hmm. and, and potentially learn to love entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if it's hardwired for people to just go take massive risks, right? Like mm -hmm. for me, I was hardwired to take risks. And I think that that's part of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So I think like risk tolerance, at least in the beginning is, I, I think somewhat, you know, within built within you, but then again, it's, it's na right. Nature, nurture. Um, I think it's a little of both. So yeah. if you grow up, if, if you're, you know, not a risk taker and you like clocking in, um, and I'm not saying that in a bad way at all, actually, I, I don't even want to use that phrase. Yeah. Um, I, I retract that statement. <laughs> I, uh, don't get canceled, I, brother. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, clocking is not the right word, but, um, you know, just having consistency and kind of knowing what you're going into every day and what your job is. Um, I think that some people are, they do better in, in those circumstances. And I think that, um, you need all those kinds to make the world go around and to have successful companies. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that, you know, if that's your biological kind of, uh, hardwiring, but you're brought up in a very entrepreneurial environment, maybe mm -hmm. you could be swayed by that. Right. So I, I don't, I don't really know. I, I do think that it's, it's a little of both. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that environment has, has a lot to do with it, who you're surrounded by. If you're surrounded by entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. as I'm kind of talking this out loud with you, I'm kind of coming up with an answer, I think, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't think it's, I don't necessarily think it's hard, right? I think it can be learned, but no, I think it can be learned by surrounding yourself with the right people. Yes, sir. And, and, and I'm glad you, you ended a on a very long winded because... answer. No, 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 no. I'm glad you, you, you kind of, you kind of worked that way through because that's over the years, especially over the last year, me doing stuff like this. And the more people I talk to, the more it reminds me, you can become almost anything through osmosis. If I'm using yes. the right word, I'm, I'm talking sure. to someone that, yeah. that almost became a doctor. Um, basically your surroundings, right. It's going to influence your, your, your environment is going to influence who you evolve to become and yes. everything good or bad can become normal after a while. Yes. Right. So it's like you, you put yourself, especially now in this day and age where you can reach out to people, social media events and stuff like that, networking, you sit around and talk to enough people through the course of time that do million dollar deals, $10 million deals, hundred million dollar deals, everything becomes normal. And yeah. you through that process, change your mindset as well, too. Truly, so, truly it's, it's interesting yeah. you say that, um, that, that tr truly happened to me. Mm. I, not necessarily on the entrepreneurial uh, level of just like being an entrepreneur or not, but on the level of like doing bigger deals, mm -hmm. um, surrounding myself with people that were doing much bigger deals and hearing bigger numbers really kind of through osmosis, it, it was interesting how less scary it all became mm -hmm. and how I, I almost just had a massive mindset shift uh, that I didn't even mean to. Just yeah. by surrounding myself, I was like, oh, of course mm -hmm. I'm going to do a deal like that. You just add a zero. What's the difference? Right. And it became a lot less scary by surrounding myself with people right. like that. Right. No, I, I love it. I think that that gives people hope. You know, people that are listening to stuff like this and and sitting there going, well, I don't necessarily have that engine. I, don't, I definitely don't have that hard wiring. How do I break out of that nine to five rat race? Well, number one, start associating with the people that broken yes. out of that rat race yes. you can't you can't break out that break out of that rat race with your co-workers that are stuck in that same wheel they yeah. may be great people have you know go to super bowl parties with them and stuff like that enjoy their company but they're not going to be the resources to help you break out so that that I was key that's important um so like i said i, I gotta unpack a lot of stuff that you said so <laughs> the next thing i want to ask you because this again i think you're a perfect example of this is 
you know, where are we, in your opinion, in the education system? How important is it for people to be successful to have, quote unquote, higher learning or a college degree, in your opinion? Yeah, um, I think that specific industries, it's extremely important. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to be an engineer or a doctor or a chemist or any of these things, um, absolutely higher education. Mm -hmm. I think uh, everything else, it's not necessary. I think real world experience is much more important. Although with that said, I think you have to live in, in reality, right? So guys, like a lot of entrepreneurs are college dropouts and a lot of, you know, influential speakers will say, you know, you don't need a college degree. But with that said, like I have... I have hired people before, mm -hmm. um, and the first thing I look at is, did they go to a four-year school? It's almost like a check mark that that in our society today is uh, is something to just consider. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't, if you don't, I mean, I think you, I think that real or real world experience is downplayed, like. I think that schools and society has told us that that going and getting a degree in higher education um, is the path to, you know, higher pay, better jobs, you know, et cetera. And I, and I don't think enough emphasis is put on real world uh, yeah. experience and job experience. Um, but I do think you have to have a little of both. I think it's certain industries, maybe not. If yeah. you're a, you know, if you're a computer engineer and you code, I don't think anyone cares if you went to school, you just show up and you do your interview and you show what you've done. Yeah. And I think that's more important. And I think that may be the case on a lot of things. Um, so that's, I think that's my answer. <laughs> I, I think you're, you're, you're right on mark with that. I, I think to summarize that is if we can go back and um, again, I'm not trying to be canceled in 2022, but uh, if we go back to the core, some of the core education um, for college, right? Specialized education, door, uh, lawyer, uh, attorneys, yes. doctors, yeah. um, engineers, things like that. Those, those, those type of education certifies you to go into a specific trained yeah. field. You need that. Yep. You would have to agree that over the last 10, 15 years, college has a lot of other degrees that does not have a return on investment Absolutely. in terms of the real world. Absolutely. It doesn't, it doesn't make the degree or that, that, that's that education any less valuable, but when you talk yeah. about a tangible business, a tangible ROI, it, it, it falls short. So I think from someone that never went to college, I always want to caution people. What are you going to school for? Yeah. You know, what's your, what's your outcome and what's your end game of that? And then at the end of the day, it's like, what's your return on investment? A lot of these kids, they go $120,000 in debt. And I go, so what's your return on investment? Uh, yeah. I make $20 an hour. It's like, Totally. Yeah. You know, so the separation, I, I think, needs to be a little bit clearer. But I agree. I, don't, I, I never bashed school, even though I, was a, I barely graduated, but I never bashed school. I, I think in, under the right circumstances, just like anything, it's, it's important. Um, yeah. So, so talk to me a little bit about, you know, your advanced entrepreneurial journey. Also, you, you started as a kid. You had that. Where did you kind of sunk your teeth in after you sat there for two years in a cubicle saying, this is not for me. I'm, a, I'm yeah. breaking out this matrix. Like, what was the next step for you? How did that evolve? Yeah, so I, so I think that I had read, I'd gotten into bigger pockets, or I'd, I'd read something um, that got me into thinking about real estate investing, and I really loved the concept of buying rental properties. I loved the idea of using the bank's money to buy an asset that someone else pays mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. and if you do it right, puts money in your pocket, and. I kind of looked at all the different opportunities, you know, that exist out there. And I thought to myself, okay, a bank will not loan me money to invest in stocks or to, you know, it's very hard to get a bank to, to loan you money to go yeah. to a startup. You have to go yeah. private money. Um, but a bank will loan you if you live in it 95% to go buy a house. Yes. And I'm like, okay, that's a sweet deal. So I bought my first investment property. I saved up. I basically lived in a closet in San Francisco mm -hmm. and I saved up as much as I could. And I bought my first investment property in Southern California in Palm Springs area. 
it was the only semi-affordable place right. uh, <clears throat> where I had somewhat of access to, you know, it's, it's near my family or someone I know that could maybe drive out there if I needed them to. Mm -hmm. I was living in San Francisco at the time and Palm Springs is an hour and a half from San Diego. So, uh, I paid 118,000 for this duplex. Wow. And it was rented for 600 on each side. Okay. And when it was all said and done, I made about 200 a month cash flow. Mm -hmm. And uh and I remember the day I bought it it appraised for 150. And I was hooked. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is sweet. I just made, you know, on paper 30,000. Right. And I'm making cash flow. And right. so I, I uh, sat on that for about a year while I was still working in tech and the market was continuing to appreciate. And so I did a cash out refinance a year later. Let me pause right there. What year is this sure. roughly? 2015 maybe. Okay. Okay. 2016. Okay. Um, and I was able to pull out about 50,000, maybe $40,000 because it was worth maybe 200. A year later that that was what was happening in the market in in california so i then went and took that money and i used that as a down payment on a fourplex that was down the street and i kind of did that three times over the course of me living in san francisco for three or four years mm. and so i had this duplex uh fourplex and and then i had bought a single family home so and these seven, are all seven doors, roughly seven doors. These are all in the same area. Uh, I had them all on, you know, 30 year <clears throat> fixed notes. And I was probably making between the seven, maybe $800 cash flow. And, but, but the beautiful thing was uh, I didn't, I only, the only money that I had put in was that original first property. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what really hooked me that, mm -hmm. that concept of forcing appreciation and being able to pull money out. And there's a, we can get into that in a bit, but, um, so I had those seven and this is when I really decided, okay, I'm going to go for this full time. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know where I can't really do it in California. The market was too hot by that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I fell mm -hmm. in love with that concept of, using the bank's money and forcing appreciation and having someone pay off your debt and put money in your pocket. And so, uh, that was when I quit my job in San Francisco and I actually took a year off at that point And I did a, an around the world trip by myself. So I did mm. the millennial eat, pray, love. And, uh, I did 35 countries by myself. Oh, geez. Yeah. And I came back and I was pretty fired up and, um, this is when I was started searching for somewhere in the U S that I could buy cash flow rental properties and the numbers would work. And it led me to St. Louis, Missouri of all places. Uh, I had zero connection to St. Louis. I was talking to a friend whose brother lived out there and we were talking about real estate and I told him what I was doing. And he said, my brother's a realtor in this place called St. Louis. And I'm like, okay, where's that? Yeah. And he, he was like, well, you know, you should talk to my brother. He sells to investors all the time. And I said, okay. So I ended up talking to his brother the next day and he sent me a deal for $15,000 mm -hmm. and it was a single family home. And I completely, I, I didn't believe it. I thought they, it was an error. I thought they forgot a zero. Yeah. Like I thought there was an error on the listing. And he, he was like, no, it's, it's $15,000. It probably needs five to 10,000 of work and it'll rent for 800. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the numbers in my head and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to profit 600 a month if I do this thing and right. have basically no debt. Right. So I bought the thing sight unseen and packed up everything I owned. And I drove across the country to St. Louis and <laughs> I lived in that house. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the next day I went to, I went to Home Depot. Mm -hmm. I found a couple guys. I asked them to help me renovate it. And I slept on an air mattress in that house and renovated it, uh, over three months, four months. And that was the first property I bought in St. Louis. And I ended up, I ended up renting it for the 800, um, and doing another one down the street. And over the next three, 
three and a half years. I thought this was going to be a summer project. I ended up, um, I ended up buying many more properties. Uh, I went to different areas. I, I did student housing deals. I did more expensive, bigger complexes in, in a little more upscale areas, um, bigger rehabs. And I went through, you know, everything that could have went wrong, went wrong. I, I learned the hard way. I yeah. had contractor steal $50,000, left the country. I had six figures of credit card debt. I was paying 15% hard money loans because I quit my job and couldn't, couldn't qualify for loans anymore. Um, but I, I hung in there and I got the projects done. I believed it. I believed in the rents that I could get and I believed mm. in the projects and, you know, one by one, I would just get them done and just kept standing up and running these things out. And finally I was able to refinance everything, get out of the hard money and, um, I sold the properties in California to be able to pay off the credit card debt. And I went all in on, on the Midwest, uh, cash flow real estate. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing now full time. And I'm close to a hundred doors now. Wow. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So that, that's the story. No, no, that, that's, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Because, I, um, the one thing that I want to not glaze through is the fact that, you know, people, people listen to this. I love the Jay-Z quote, and I, 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 I'm going to try not to butcher it, but he <laughs> said, people always try to emulate the end result, but never emulate the process, right? Yeah. So I love that you point out, you know what? I'm going to risk it. I'm going to move to Missouri. Uh, I'm going to go live in my rehab. Yeah. Um, and, for, and I don't know the area, but for 15,000, I'm probably going to say probably wasn't an A grade neighborhood. So you're living, <laughs> you're living in at the time, probably a condemned <laughs> property, much. right? Yep. For three months Pretty as you're much. rehabbing it and you basically rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And through yep. that course, you had challenges like theft. You had people, you know, screw you out of money. You had contractors bail on you, this and that. Then what kept you going it, it is my long winded way of, of prepping for that question. Like most people will say, this doesn't work. So what, yeah. what made you Rob keep going? Yeah, I, I think getting back to that hardwired question, um, and also and also my my original purpose of just this this hatred of the American work system. The scam. I I really just I really just like felt a burning fire in me of I will not build someone else's company. I would rather suffer on my own and fail mm -hmm. and figure or figure this out. I am not, I just, I wanted to, I wanted to prove that, that I could do that to with, you know, with myself. And I wanted to um, stick with it because of how much I disagreed with everything we've been taught in, in the U S about yeah. education and, you know, the, the normal path. And so that really kept me going. And I would say like other things layered in there, like, you know, my love of, of, you know, rental properties and that concept of other people's money and, you know, that stuff, but that's not why you do things. You do things because of some, some other deeper, deeper reason. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? Simon, uh, Simon Sinek, or I forget his name. The one that wrote, find your why, um, hmm. You know, I think it's asking those types of questions right. of, of, of getting a few layers deep. And I, and I had, uh, you know, a couple, a lot of people do it for their kids, right. To have freedom in their life. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think freedom was a part of it as well. But for me at that point, it was, it was just, I was deeply against, uh, that, that, that climb the corporate ladder life that we've been shoved in our faces, um, forever. So that's yeah. what kept me getting up. So for those guys that are listening, what I'm getting out of that, what Rob is telling me is if it wasn't real estate, it would have been something else because oh, yeah. he, he was committed. Definitely. He was committed to not being part of that hamster wheel, right? Definitely. So, yeah. so, you know, as you guys are listening to this, again, you know, this is not real estate centric. Rob just happens to be an entrepreneur in real estate, but you have to realize that when you go out and you venture out, you got to know your why. And that's so important because- that, that beauty of entrepreneurship, the gated yeah. house, that nice car and all that stuff, that's way after. <laughs> that's way after 
that's why after the the many tears the the ramen meals and sleeping yeah. in a in a you know your rehab et cetera et cetera right i mean there's been times where i slept in my rehab with my dog and a gun you know what i mean yeah yeah you do what you got to do um so so yeah so as you guys are listening to that just know that that's part of every real every entrepreneur journey and it's not just real estate in some yeah. form or another so the why is super super important yeah. um so you use the word freedom i love listening to people talk because i want to hear their their vocabulary you use the word freedom that that word is super important to me so for yeah. you what does freedom mean in terms of of uh, not having your own boss or being financially free i mean the cars the trips all that's fun i'm sure but at the core of it what does freedom mean for you yeah so I mean, freedom ultimately is choosing to choosing to pursue things in my life and spend my time on my own accord and where I want to spend them mm -hmm. um, and spend it and ver versus needing to be somewhere to put money on the table to to take two weeks off or to go pursue hobbies or, or et cetera. My, I think freedom to me is the ability to choose where I'm spending my time. The reality is I love working. Hmm. I, I was talking to my parents the other night and, and they had asked me, you know, what they asked me a really good question that I never really figured out the answer to until I was talking to them the other night. And they asked me, what's your cash flow goal? Or like, when do you stop? When, when do you call it a day? And, and my answer, um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, if I get to 50,000 a month, like I'm, that's it, I'm, yeah. I'm done. Um, I can do whatever I want. And you can, you know, I mean, if you're at 20,000 a month, 10,000 a month, I mean, you're, you're done. You just replaced a six figure salary. Yeah. You know, like you can do pretty much live any lifestyle you want, you know, besides the ultra, ultra rich at, at that level. And so my answer to them was not a number. It was, it was, I, I don't have a number. I, there is no number. I love working. I will keep building because I enjoy it. There's no, I'm going to just keep going. I want to be able to write a huge check to charities that I care about. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to, you know, fly my friends out on an amazing ski vacation or do, you know, take care of the people that I love or give to causes I care about. There, there is no number. Um, and so that was an interesting introspection for me and i think that again if you don't love the journey you're screwed if yeah. you're doing this for for the the i mean i think it's to a certain level the cars and, and the lifestyle and and whatnot can inspire you sure but i think that when you get there you will realize that it's not all it's cracked up to be you very quickly it's called hedonistic adaptation mm. so you very quickly get used to it um, and it sounds really awesome and, and it is, it is driving. It can drive you to, to work really hard and go for it. But I think you do have to dig deeper and have kind of a backup deeper reason. Right. And, and if you ultimately enjoy the, the process of building, and that's what I realized, I, I'm not going to stop because I like the journey. Like I like building. Yeah. So, um, I forget what the original question was. But no, 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 that's great. That's great. I, I think, you know, we're, we're focusing on, on the why aspect of it and, you know, what keeps you going. And, and for sure. you, it's like, you've gotten to a point where the financial freedom gives you options and options yes. and freedom for you means you can do what you want to do with whom you want to do it with, you know, without looking at a clock or looking at your watch, you know, it's like, uh, what, what's that? Um, uh, God, I'm like the meme, the meme King. Uh, <laughs> I just saw something where it said, you know, it's not a huge flex checking your Rolex you know, to clock back in for work. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it, it's, it's true, right? Once, once you get that, that financial freedom and it could be 10,000, it could be 20, yeah. it could be a hundred, whatever it is, you know, you scale it down. It, it, people, people should, would be very surprised if they sat down, they, they did their books yep. and they trim all the fat, cut the bullshit. Yep. They'd be surprised how little it really takes to be financially independent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not talking absolutely. about Jeff Bezos yachts, right? Of I'm course. talking about, well, I can breathe. There's, there's Absolutely. no bills and, you know, this and that. And, yeah. right, and, and right. And I think that that's the answer to, to freedom, right? right. What, what you were asking is that feeling of I can breathe. Mm -hmm. Like if I, if I got fired, I could pay the bills. If yep. I choose to quit, mm -hmm. I can pay the basics. Mm -hmm. I am not forced to go to work to meet my basic necessities. And right. I think that that feeling, that weight off your shoulders 
is that freedom. Yep. And then, you know, and then of course it's funny because new, new problems, quote problems come when, when, when you have that, right. So you get into like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So, mm -hmm. right. It's, it's your basic needs first, food, shelter, water, love. And, and then, you know, once those are kind of met, um, it becomes bigger things like meaning and mm -hmm. purpose and these other things that maybe you didn't have time to think about. But I, I think that thinking about those things create a, a good life. Um, and so, you know, these are just all stuff I like to talk about, but I think freedom ultimately uh, is, is not, is having your basic needs met yeah. and having that weight off your shoulder without being, without having to go to work. So um, it's a, it's a, certainly a, a good feeling. <laughs> that, no, that's a great segue to what I want to talk to you about next, but, you know, to summarize, you know, what you're saying is, you, know, you, you get your house in order, man. Then you start looking outside your house. You go, okay, now I have the, the time and the resource to do the things that I care about, you know, on a, even a bigger scale, right? Yeah. Um, money is a tool. So if you have more of the tools, you can make a bigger impact. And, you know, I'm not saying if someone doesn't have money, they can go work in a soup kitchen. That doesn't make an impact. Of course sure. it does. But from a bigger scale, sure. a million bucks makes yeah. a lot bigger impact. Not yeah. saying one is better in value. It's just yeah. the reality of it, right? Yeah. Um, so, so let's go down that vein a little bit because I know sure. you, you, um, you have some causes that are kind of near and dear to your heart um, yeah. with the Special Olympics, right? Especially, yeah. am I right with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, talk um, on that. You wouldn't mind. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up. I, I think you know this is another, I guess, part of my why and freedom to me. Um, I've given. You know, I've volunteered with the Special Olympics for a long time. Uh, ever since I was in college, I coached the swim team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, I've always enjoyed working with those kids. And, um, and I think that, you know, here, here in Austin now, I, I sit on the, the young professional board for Special Olympics. And, you know, it's just been a really great way to give, give my time back and just be, you know, I, I try and bring people up in this world. I try and be a positive person and influence wherever I can. And, um, and I think that, you know, having the time, uh, to be able to give to, to something like that is incredibly meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. Right. So like that gives me more meaning than even closing a big deal at this point. Um, yeah. uh, they're, they're, they're both important, right. In different <laughs> ways, right. but, uh, it's certainly very fulfilling. And so like, that's a, a cause near and dear to my heart. We just did a really fun, uh, virtual wine tasting event, uh, for the, the young professional board I was telling you about for special Olympics here in mm -hmm. Austin. And, um, it was really cool. We had, you know, 150 people log on to this, uh, to, to a zoom. And, um, uh, one of my buddies started a wine company that make that does these mini wine bottles. Mm -hmm. Um, here, I'll show you. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, please. <clears throat> so you got like a six pack of these mini wine shipped to you mm -hmm. and they're uh, i think a glass and a half or something right okay. and so everyone got them shipped and and then you would log on to the zoom and a professional sommelier would lead this this wine tasting experience oh, cool. from home and uh, yeah, and we raised, I mean, we've got to write a check for over $10,000 to Special Olympics here in Austin with just, you know, a little creative marketing and two weeks of, you know, blasting out emails to our network. So, you know, stuff like that's really meaningful to me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I feel lucky that I, I get to do that. And, and again, bringing back to, to freedom and, and why my whys um, yeah. and why I do this and real estate, um, it's for stuff like that. Yeah. I think initially people get out in the course of, of, you know, trying to make more money, financial freedom, entrepreneurship, yes. because they have to take care of the tangibles, right? Yes. But the things that aren't tangibles are the things that actually feel your heart. And what you're doing yes. now is the stuff that, you know, feels your heart, right? And yeah. again, 
going back, man, you got to take care of your house before you can go out and take care of someone else's first. Yeah, and, agreed. And that starts with financial independence. So agreed. I love that, man. Um, you know, we'll talk offline. Let me know how I can support. We'll definitely, uh, if that's still open, I'll buy, a, I'll buy a couple of packages and stuff that support that. that that'd, be, awesome. that'd be beautiful. No, for sure. Appreciate it. No, yeah, yeah. You count me in on that. So Wait. let me, let me ask you this. Um, I think you and I were going to go for a couple of rounds, but I want to keep this one you know, within an hour, uh, but we yeah. can talk all day about this stuff. Talk to the audience right now that's listening to you and they see you, they go, dude, this Rob guy, he has it put together. He's this and that. I'm just a guy that literally is killing myself nine to five. Yeah. I just want to go home and veg out. Yeah. But I know that's not the path that's going to take me to where I want to be. Yeah. What are some of the steps? One, two, three steps that can help this person break out of their yeah. routine. Okay. So, I mean, look, first of all, I was that guy too. We all, we all were that guy at some point. I didn't start with a trust fund or, you know, a loan for 5 million bucks for my family, you know, it, 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 so it, I feel like, you know, you, you should be hopeful even as, you know, a nine to five and you're tired at the end of the day, you don't have that much saved up. Um, you still have a chance to do this. And so I, first of all, acknowledging that, right. And second of all, um, like we talked about earlier, I think being surrounded by the right people, um, listening to people like Gary Vaynerchuk, mm -hmm. one of my favorite entrepreneurial, um, you know, inspirational speakers, yeah. if you will, <clears throat> um, reading books like Brandon, Brandon Turner has some great books, um, on, on both real estate specific and entrepreneurship and kind of the, the whys behind that. Um, so I think surrounding yourself with the right people to stay motivated and, um, and it's really, it's really taking action and taking calculated risk and knowing that it's not going to happen overnight. Right. You have to set your expectation and, you know, I ate shit for five years before anything resembled somewhat of, you know, some right. consistent <clears throat> what you maybe could even call like somewhat success, but yeah. I don't even know if I would call it that yet. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think having realistic expectations on that, uh, and, and going for it. Right. And, and I think that, you know, I, I don't know if I fully agree with some of the, of the, the people that are like, you know, side hustle work till 2 AM after your nine to five and right. raise a family. Like, I think that's bullshit. Right. I don't think that's a healthy way to live, live a good life. Correct. Um, but I do think the world is changing. Mm -hmm. I do think that there are more and more opportunities to get creative, to sell products, mm -hmm. to buy and find real estate in different markets that might not be in your backyard. Um, and, you know, go, go to, uh, you know, a real estate meetup, go to, um, a Facebook group that's like for entrepreneurs or something and like, just start talking to people. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, being inspired. And I also think that with COVID it's opened up this world of work from home. I think a lot of, a lot of people are talking about, you know, four day work weeks. I mean, I mm -hmm. think the world is changing a sure. bit and I think that yeah. will support, um, <laughs> the, that will support having kind of a, a healthy, you know, quote side hustle. Um, and, and so I think that, you know, a combination of these things of surrounding yourself with the right people, knowing your motivation, um, you know, reading, educating yourself on whatever entrepreneurial path you're going to go down, whether it's real estate or whether it's, you know, writing code for an app or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. Um, and then, and then really you, you gotta, you gotta put yourself out there. Like it's, yep. it's scary. Like it sucks. I mean, and I think you have to be you have to be willing to go through that. So, um, I think that between those things, you know, but it's so doable, it's doable at the end of the day. Right. So it's, mm -hmm. it's about having realistic expectations, but going for it. Um, and I think that, you know, if you want it bad enough, like you will stand back up and you will yeah. figure it out. And I think that's what happened to me. Right. I was certainly not successful in the beginning. Yeah. Um, I got beat down many, many times. Yep. So, really digging down on your why and, and using that to, to fuel you to, to get back up and keep going. I think that's, I think that's the answer. And you, you started again, refresh my memory. Your first house you bought was in what year in Palm Springs, 2012, you said? Uh, tw no, tw 20, 2016, I think. 2016. Okay. Yeah. Plus so or minus 2016. Years, but... So we're looking about six years ago. Yes. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even within that small time frame, I'm, and I'm going somewhere with this, even with that, within that small time frame of six years, the tools that are at your fingertips now, would yeah. you not have killed to have when you first started? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's so much new technology has come up. So many things have changed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's absolutely the, the game has changed. So and, that, that's just in one industry. So where I'm going yeah. with this audience is I promise you there has never been, never in a human history, there has never yeah. been a better time for you to have resources, access to people, so yeah. you can go out there and venture off to do a quote unquote side hustle, being an entrepreneur or whatever it is that you, you want to do outside of your nine to five. I'm not a guy that says, go quit your nine to five. You know what yeah. I mean? You have, you have mouths to feed, especially yeah. you got to do that. I, right I don't, I agree with that. I don't yeah. think you should. I think yeah. that I might've quit too soon, to be honest. I don't know if I would do that again, Looking because back. keep in mind, like you can't get loans as soon as you don't have a W2. True. It's True. It, so that it, there's pros and cons. So you want to be a little careful about that. Right. And again, this is, this will be on YouTube and, and the Spotify and everything else. So I'm not giving out financial advice, but I will say this. And then, you know, Rock just concurred is you, there's never been a time in history that with everything at your fingertips, literally that you can actually make money on. And, and we're talking about massive amount of money. We're not talking about, you know, 20 bucks a month, you know, $10, a little novelty here and there. We're talking about people replacing, supplementing their W2 incomes within two years or less. You know, so, so go out there, like Rob is saying, network, dig into the resources. We just spent last Sunday watching Super Bowl for two hours. You yeah. know, does, do you have to watch millionaires, you know, play and catch a ball? No, yeah. that probably could have been done using something else if you're not where you want to be. So, yeah. so just a little tidbit. So um, you mentioned something that I, I didn't want to let go because this is how my wife and I, you know, embrace life is through tra travel. So this whole COVID thing has mm -hmm. been just our, our wonderlust awesome. is through the roof. Uh, 35 <laughs> countries, man. Um, just that one year, name some of the cool places you've been. Yeah. So I would say some of my top, top couple, and these are for different reasons. Um, so New Fiji, New Zealand, mm. stunning, absolutely stunning. Uh, I did the, it's called the Milford track in New okay. Zealand. So I did like a four, four or five day backpacking trek through the Milford Sound in New Zealand. And it was absolutely stunning. That was one of my favorite nature places. And Fiji, uh, I'm a big scuba diver and surfer. So, oh. so Fiji was just beautiful, friendly people, great food. That was a really special experience. Uh, I would say I loved the culture of uh, some certain countries in Europe. Mm -hmm. I loved Copenhagen. I just love the, their take on life and happiness there is, is um, it's just a really warm, welcoming, beautiful take on life. They're, they're very happy. Um, great looking people too, I, by the way. What? Great looking people too, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, like, you, guys, <laughs> that. you guys all models? Like what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Scan, scan I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed uh, that Scandinavian culture and Italy, best mm -hmm. food I've ever had, no doubt. Um, and then I would say my other favorite place, th th granted, this was not on that trip, mm -hmm. but uh, Patagonia and Buenos Aires in Argentina. Oh, okay. In Chile. Uh, Torres del Paine mm -hmm. in Chile is a spectacular life changing just like the just like the milford track in new zealand mm -hmm. if you ever get a chance to do buenos aires and patagonia mm. uh it is like stepping back in time 20 million years it's wow. glaciers That's and just this vast open raw land and it is incredible i mean you know it's it's untouched by humans really um more so than i've i've seen anywhere I've been. So especially if you live in the U.S. and in any, you know, I mean, there's a few places in the U.S., Yellowstone and Yosemite and stuff that are semi-untouched, sure. sure. but man, you go down there and it's like the end of the earth. It's really cool. So those are my yeah. top. I, I do appreciate you getting to the culture, you, you, you know, especially with the backpacking stuff, it forces you to kind of dive into the culture oh, yeah. versus and, th and, and this form of vacation is great too, but I know plenty of people that go to you know, various countries and they're at the four seasons all the time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, you know, yeah. Okay. I guess you're traveling. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My wife and I, we do the same thing, man. We we dive into we dive into the culture. We eat street food. We do all that oh, stuff. Right. So yeah, that's 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 our our life slash love language. So so just hearing all that stuff uh, makes me excited. Um, so speaking of excitement, what, what got you, what has you excited now? Like what's uh, in the immediate future that, that, uh, you're excited about? Do you willing uh, to share or can share? Yeah. So let's see, I've got some, some good new deals I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm working on a, a so I, I really like doing student housing right now. Um, and that's kind of been my new project and, and focus in real estate. Mm-hmm. So it's it's getting harder to as as the market is just out of control yeah. right now it's it's getting harder you have to get more creative so mm-hmm. things like short term vacation rentals airbnb is still making money um and student housing is still making money in certain markets so i'm getting really into the student housing stuff and doing um i guess i'm i'm coining it luxury student housing but i okay. i kind of found a, a niche in doing these really high-end renovations for students. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of did it on accident, but it turned out to be very successful. And I got way above market rents. So Mm. I'm working on a couple of those and I'm working on uh, my first syndication. So I've got a a 36 unit that I'm working on right now that I raised some money on. And uh, so that would be on the, on the business front. And the personal front, the, you know, the special Olympic stuff and getting more involved in that is, is really exciting to me right now. And then, and then planning, planning my next trip. I, uh, I don't know where I'm going yet. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm pretty spontaneous with, <clears throat> with that stuff. So I'll kind of, when I get a break in between the business action, I might just, I might just spin the globe and just go for it for a week. Yeah. And, uh, there's still a few on my list. I, I have not, I never really did Southeast Asia. Mm. Um, been to Bali? I, I have been to Bali, but I never oh. did like, yeah, that place is, it's so. Our it's favorite great. place, hands down, in the it's world. Amazing. Yeah. I, I love that place. It, that was a great, <clears throat> a great trip. Um, but I haven't done, you know, Thailand, Cambodia, all that. Okay. I have not done, uh, I want to do Japan, China. Mm-hmm. I haven't done any of that either. So those are all high on the list. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Well, hopefully as the world starts opening up, you know, in the next... 12, 18 months, you know, things get back to, to normal. We can get more of that. Cause I, cause I want to travel, but I also don't want to travel with too much restrictions. You know, I want to, I want to, like I said, I'm, I'm I a guy that does, doesn't stay in the hotel. I want to die. I, I went to, I went to Europe last summer. Um, for a few months I did Spain and, and it was, uh, there were still restrictions and it's, it was not, it was not that great. So it's not the same, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not the same. Yeah. So, but I, I think we are as a, <laughs> I think the world is like, moving through COVID. I think we're, I yeah. mean, I don't know. I, but it feels like we're getting closer to the tail end. Yeah. Yeah. I think we said that C word about five times. I'm about to get banned. So we're not going to say that word anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, Hey man, I, I appreciate, appreciate your time. I think conversations like this, you and I, we're going to have a couple more rounds. I think throughout the year, I'm going to invite you back, kind of check on you and see how things are going. And I would definitely will hit you up whether you like it or not. We're going to go to, um, you know, Terry Black's. Oh, so, please do. I, yeah. I will, uh, I'll give you the full Austin tour if you're in town. Love it. Love it. Love it. So before I go, uh, two things I want to do is I want to ask you to kind of have the megaphone to the audience or even sure. to the world, right? Fictitiously and give some uh, tidbits, some of your personal thoughts, some words of encouragement, because I think we need to hear more of that. And then lastly, I'll have you kind of promote whatever you want to promote, if anything at all. So, sir, sure. you have the, um, the, the, the stand, the megaphone to the world. Uh, what would you like to share or say? Man, okay. Um, no pressure. Yeah, put me on the spot here. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I said it earlier, right? I think that I think that it it comes down to there's a there's a lot of noise in the mm. world right now. Okay, we're living in an unprecedented human psychological experiment of TikTok and Instagram and crap coming at you from all directions at literally all hours of the day in your phone, on your TV, on your computer at all times. Humans are not made for that amount of stimulation. And I think that, uh, I think that, you know, A, it's incredibly anxiety producing. B, realizing that when you see 
you know, the Ferraris and the perfect looking people on Instagram and all of these things, I think really getting, get, getting real with yourself on the fact that a, that is the highlight mm. and it is not the reality. And so, and really, I think really getting down to a place of understanding who you are, what drives you, what is important to you in life without the noise and without the crap coming from everywhere, because it's so all over the place. And I fall prey to this all the time and I really have to check myself. Sure. So I think really understanding who you are and, um, you know, like Gary Vaynerchuk says, it's, it's so much more about about kindness and being a good person and understanding who you are and what drives you and, and enjoying the journey and really trying to get down to that. And, and, uh, and if the, the Ferraris are, you know, what drive you just realizing that you may get there, but, but kind of what's, what's behind that. Yeah. Right. So, um, but I also will say, you know, with, with those things said that all of this is very achievable. And, and I agree with you. I think it's probably more achievable now than it ever has been. And I think the, the, you know, the internet and all of these social media platforms and the accessibility and ease of communication in the world we live in today mm -hmm. has opened up a ton of doors and people, despite, you know, you think every idea is taken, people keep coming up with good ones. So yeah. they're still out there and there's still the tried and true methods of, you know, um, of things like real estate that you can be successful in. And I think that if you're itching to get out of that nine to five and you're fired up by that, you should fucking go for it. Yeah. <clears throat> you should, Thanks. because you don't want to look back on your past and be like, I never did it. Right. Right. I agree hundred percent. I, I think that'll be the title of your, your episode is you should fucking go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be mad if that's uh, the title. <laughs> so I, I, tell you, I tell you what, man, that's beautifully stated. And, and life is a wonderful thing. And life is, unfortunately, a really quick thing. You know, regardless yeah. if you live, you know, 100 years or whatever it is, man. And, and you don't want to ever look back. And never look back and say, I, I would have, you know, should have, you know, that kind of deal. I respect people that go out there in the trenches, regardless if they ever achieve what they yeah. want to achieve, you know, on paper. Totally. It's like, dude, if you're out in the trenches, I respect it. And to yeah. reiterate, there's never been a better time to go out in the trenches and test yourself. Don't quit your nine to five. We're not saying that. But totally. the time that you have, go out there in the trenches, make yourself better, be a better, whatever you need to be, so you can achieve what you want to achieve, man. And that, that's it. And, and you're living proof of that. And thank you so much for being on the show. Before I let you go, tell people how they can uh, reach out and contact you. Well, first and foremost, um, do you have a significant other? I always have to pre preface it. <laughs> I don't want people to be uh, sliding I, in DM for the wrong reason. I, I do not. I do not. Okay, well, well you're in trouble now. <laughs> so, how do people get a hold of you, brother? So, uh, best way it, it, to kind of follow my journey, probably Instagram. Okay. Um, my Instagram is Rob D LaRue. So at R O B D as in David L A R U E. Uh, I post business and, and fun travel. It's kind of, kind of both lifestyle ish account. And then, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, following up on any questions business-wise, I'm always happy to, to help. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's part of my, part of my duty uh, through this, this journey of life to, to give back wherever I can. So, you know, if you have questions about specific deals or, you know, trying to get out of your nine to five or do a side hustle, like don't quit your nine to five, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anything, yeah. uh, please send me an email, Rob, R-O-B, at pointbreakcap.com. So my company's Point Break Capital. Uh, I'm a big surfer, so Point Break. Uh, I got so that yep. P-O-I-N-T, B as in boy, R-E-A-K, and then cap, C-A-P, short for capital.com. I'll link all that on the description so people can find you. Um, yeah. You're a hell of a dude, man. You're inspiring. I love that energy. I love the positivity. You know, life isn't always perfect. Every day isn't always perfect, but it's how we receive it and how we deal with it, right? And, uh, and I think um, the energy you project is what you get back. And you're a prime example of positive energy, man. So thank you so much for your time today, brother. I appreciate it, Rick. It was, uh, it was good to catch up. Yeah, for sure. We'll do this again. And, and I will hit you up when I'm in Austin. That's, uh, okay. that's a guarantee. Please, please do.